A common question I get all the time is, what design software are you using? And for the last couple of years, I've been pretty much bouncing back and forth between a bunch of different free versions and some old stuff I had, and nothing was perfect, and I finally have a winner here. It's the Alibre Atom 3D. Um, I bought this a couple weeks ago. A friend of mine actually told me to try it, said it's pretty good, and they had a special deal going on. So I, I tried it, and then I wound up buying a copy of it because it, I just love it. So here it is. I've been playing with it for a couple hours now. So, you know, I'm not really that great at it. But pretty much what I've been able to do is create my first little assembly and some drawings of uh, the next build I'm going to be doing. So that's what it looks like when you open it up. You get a list, you know, you see your parts that you've drawn. And here is an um, assembly of a cabinet I'm going to be building to hold the pack out boxes that I'm doing all the inserts for. And you can see um, it was a pretty simple assembly to start with, but you know, that's how you have to start out with these things. And let's just click on this side panel and open it up in another drawing. And there's, you know, there's pretty much how quick it is to go back and forth. And there's the actual 3D model that's in that assembly there of the panel. And each, you know, each part has a model of it. So that, um, you know, it's really, really, I've been enjoying it. So let's go back through and now we'll look at the drawing of a part. This is the top of it. And this was a simple drawing I did just to have, you know, documents for making it. I used to do hand sketches, but I get that brain fog and I mess up a lot by not documenting it now. So this, um, you know, this is really a good solution takes about, you know, five minutes to put a drawing together like this once you have the part drawn up and add some dimensions. So let me just go back and show you how to make a part. You just uh, start by clicking on that there, create new. And it opens up a drawing window there. And I'm going to insert a sketch. And this is all sketch driven, so it makes it really simple to use. So you just have to pick a plane to put your sketch on. And there I am in the drawing mode. And you see there's a whole box of drawing tools that pop up, just like, you know, any other program. I'm just going to draw a simple square here. And let's put some dimensions on it just to, you know, make it like a 2 by 2 square. Just to show you, you can go back and change these dimensions once you put them on and change parts, change drawings. Everything gets updated automatically. So there I've got a horizontal and a vertical dimension. And you just, you know, type in what you want. So there's a two by two box. Let's get out of the sketch. And then just click on extrude and up it comes. Type in the length that you want. So there it is, about 30 seconds. You've got a part drawn. Really simple, um, you know, sketch driven, easy to use, I find. I'm really comfortable with it. And I have very little time on it, like I said. So let's uh, put another sketch on the end of that. They had a circle there. So I'm just going to throw anything on there and then exit the sketch. So now I can do whatever I want with that sketch. Let's start by putting a hole all the way through this piece. And we can just go up there and just say three, through all. And take a look in there. That round circle has put a hole right through the piece. But then again, let's, do, let's delete that one here. And I'll just show you that you've got options because... Let's just do another extrude on there and make the piece have a, um, a round shaft stiff, sticking off of it. So, you know, windows open up, type in what you want. And there it is. So now I have a part with a round and a square on it. Pretty simple. Then you've got all kinds of other tools you can use, like a shell. Like you can see, I can make it hollow. I can set the wall thickness, take out the walls I don't want. So it's really, you know, super simple, especially for 3D printing and stuff like that. Okay, so, um, and then let's put a, let's try to put a radius on the end here. And actually I didn't update, I didn't uh, type in the right number, it didn't take. But let's, uh, let me show you what happens if you try to do something wrong. And there it is, if you, uh. You try to do something that won't fit it tells you and i'm going to go back and change that to the point one and there it is it's on there so you know, it's pretty easy to figure out when you do something wrong if you have the uh, warnings all turned on so now i'm just going to go and save this part here
And then I'm going to go over here and I want to make a drawing of it. So just go there, click on right click and make drawing from part. Opens up the windows. Now I'm just using a blank format. You can add formats and stuff in. Let's click on all the views just so you see, you know, how many views you can get. Now this is the uh, stripped down version, the the Atom. So uh, there there are more features in the higher end version, but this is plenty for me. So there it is. All the views came up. And let's just get rid of ones we don't really need. I just wanted to show you how quick it is to create views with this. And um, it's really, um, you know, you really can get a drawing in a couple of couple minutes. And I still haven't figured out how to use the dimensions on the sketches. So I go back and add my own dimensions. So like I said, I've only been playing with this about maybe about six hours so far. And there you can uh, change how your view looks. If you want to show the hidden lines inside, you want to turn them off. Everything is customizable. And that one main view there is what moves is all the other ones are tied to. So if you drag that one around, the other ones will go. And then you have to drag them around separately if you keep them locked together. So pretty easy, pretty much, you know, I've got the start of a drawing here with no format or anything. But again, you can add all that to automatically, you know, to put it on a format automatically. Now, when you go to drag it, you can't just drag the part. you got to grab that corner up there of the view. I keep forgetting that, but um, that's how it is. So the, you can drag the isometric ground and let's change the scale on it. Let's make it a little bit bigger there. And you can see how quick and easy it is. So the drawing views on this are really simple. And then I'm going to go back here and just show you how I add some dimensions. And these dimensions are all driven by the actual part itself. I'll show you in a second if you go back and change the part. The dimensions actually do update. Oops, I grabbed the wrong one there. Let's make it a little bigger. So it's easier to see. So there, I've got, you know, seven and seven on there. And let's just uh, throw a dimension on there. Oops, I got the, I got to blow it up some to get the other dimension. But you can see, you can actually change what they look like. You can change the standard. You can use the uh, DIN, the ISO, the ANSI is... You know, all kinds of choices. I haven't fully set it up yet, but I'm just learning and I'm having fun. And again, you can change the scale. And when you change the scale of that main view, the other ones, you know, are tied to it and they do change also. And you can do simple sections and everything else. For the more advanced features, you have to buy the higher end package. But, you know, this was the, um, you know, it's a lifetime license too. So you don't have to keep buying it. That's the best part about it. Okay, so let's save that, and then what we're going to do, we're going to um, go back to the model there, and I'm just going to modify this. I'm going to change that extrusion there that I did. Got one right there, and I'm going to change the length of that. I'm going to add an inch on it, and you can see I updated that. It's now 8 inches. And exit out of there, and then you just have to kind of you can drag you can drag the um, the features. You can make them turn them on and off easily here too. So turn everything else back on after modifying it. And let's go back to the drawing now. Let's save that and open the drawing up again. And you notice when you open the drawing up, everything's in red. It means it needs to be updated. And once you hit the update. All the views of the drawing are, you know, updated to show that eight inches now. So really, um, really simple to use, you know, be hard to make a mistake with it. And really, um, I, I'm enjoying it so far. So that's why I bought it. It's, it's really a lot like solid works when you um, look at it. Now, I also bought the package with the mesh cam for the cam. I was going to buy VCarve, but I figured this would be a more usable package for me with the 3D printing and the lasers and everything. 
So I still haven't set up mesh cam, but this I'll have to go in and set up my CNC router on it, give all the, you know, the specs on it. And then I'm going to have to see if they have a post processor for the Maso controller, which I don't think they do, but I might have to see if they can make one or I can, you know, use a generic one. But pretty much I did buy both ends. Of it. I bought the workshop that does include the uh, cam end of it, just so I, you know, for the CNC routing. So this will be my final solution here. And I just have to learn how to use it. I haven't played with that yet. And you can see um, I got this upstairs now, but I'm using that little, little B-Link box with the Ryzen R7 chip in it. And that just want, runs it fantastic. And here's some uh, printouts that I got of what I've been doing. And here's kind of a, a look at the assembly. I still haven't figured out putting the bubbles on it and all kinds of stuff like that. But I've got each of the, the drawings of each of the parts done now. Um, it only took a couple minutes to really put all this together. So, you know, it really, it really will avoid me making many mistakes now that I've got, you know, dimension drawings to go by. And you know, hopefully I'll be able to share some of these for the projects over time. Now, if you decide to download a free trial and just look at it, uh, there's a lot of stuff online. I haven't gone through this yet. But you can see the Libre Atom. You go in there and they've got all kinds of uh, videos about getting started. And, you know, it's pretty easy once you uh, you think it through. And you get used to just using sketches and adding on to it. So each, you know, each of these ones does have its own video. And they do have a YouTube channel with videos too. So I would, you know, I would recommend you, you spend some time if you have no idea about CAD. You know, just downloading it and... Uh, going through those videos and seeing if, you know, possibly it might be something that you'd want to learn or can learn. And there's a whole section on the sketching, which I haven't gone through yet either, but um, pretty much the most efficient ways to do it. And I bought this CAD CAM package here, best and easiest CAD CAM. So that will, um, that gives me the total solution for the, um, you know, all my design, 3D printing, uh, laser cutting, 2D stuff, and also for the CNC router. So this should solve all my problems with no size limits for the, for like uh, VCarve has. Now, if you go in here and let's go back to that part and we can export for 3D printing, you know, your steps, your steels, and you know, all different types of 3D files and uh, pictures of it now when you export the step there are a couple different ones to choose from and i guess not all slicers are compatible with all of them so make sure if one doesn't work you try the next one before you you know do too much uh debugging so you can um you know you can export your models right to the 3d printing and then you can go back and you can export your 2D stuff to a DXF, DWG, PDF. And um, so there, let's just export a, a PDF of this, which is just a standard PDF that could be read by anything. So all you do is just hit export and uh, give it a name. And there it goes. It's gone. So now you can share this with anybody or just print it out anywhere. And I also exported DXF, but let's see here. Let's open this uh, PDF. And there you can see it's a PDF right there, just viewed in uh, Microsoft. And then I also exported a DXF so I could show you how it goes into Lightburn. Okay, here's Lightburn, and let's import this DXF of that one top drawing. And let's find it first, and there it is. Now, I, I export it with all the garbage crap, and I did not update the scale. You really want to make sure that you have it set to export at one-to-one. -one. I have this um, half-scale exported, so I have to adjust the scale on Lightburn or go back and change the export things. But, you know, it's just a simple matter of cleaning up what I don't want here. And then I have uh, have my files for laser cutting also that are, you know, extremely accurate and no no real messing. And it can be changed in Lightburn also if you want to, you know, change features or add text or do anything. So, you know, it's a good, it's a good combination with everything, I think, this program. And uh, 
I've been real happy with it so far. No major crashes or anything. Everything has worked good, but easy to learn, easy to use. And um, I figured I'd just share this with you and, you know, let you know that I finally did settle on a program to use. And I bought this. I own it now. It's a lifetime license. So this is what I'll be using from now on. And there's a fully functioning free trial available that you know if you think it might it looks like something you might be able to use um try to free trial and you know see if it works for you thanks for watching please subscribe